Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at Bokiaro et al. 2012, um, Disobedience and Whistleblowing. Theories on which the study is based. Independent behaviour slash defiance involves the rejection of social influence slash power to behave in line with one's own internal attitudes, morals and beliefs. Disobedience slash defiance to an unjust authority is a precondition for social progress. In most situations, a lower level of whistleblowing than disobedience would be expected since it involves potential direct confrontation between the defiant person and the authority figure. Are obedient individuals different from disobedient individuals? If this is the case, then it may be possible to, to determine certain personality characteristics that such individuals have that make them more likely to obey or disobey um, unjust authority figures. Background. Previous research, such as that by Milgram, had provided un understanding about the processes involved in obedience. However, before this con contemporary uh, study took place, we knew little about who the people are that disobey or blow the whistle, what causes those who disobey or blow the whistle to choose the mor morally challenging path, do people who disobey have certain characteristics that differentiate them from those who obey. In the study by Boccaro et al. 2012, they decided to investigate these questions by providing the, the participants with the option to take action, a whistleblow, on an unjust authority figure. The study also aimed to replicate the findings that Milgram had previously found by showing a wide gap between people's predictions of their own actions and others' actions, and the actual behavioural outcomes. Research method. Bocchiaro et al. considered this study as a lab experiment. However, like Milgram, there was in fact no independent variable, so the study may best be viewed as a lab study or as Bocchiaro et al. say, a scenario study. The study took place in a lab at the VU University in Amsterdam, so conditions could be controlled. For example, the procedure was standardised, so the experimental authority uh, behaviour and co cover story were consistent throughout the experimental period. Two spe uh, specially prepared rooms were used. Timings for when the experimenter left the room were kept the same for all participants. Data was gathered on the number of participants who obeyed by writing a statement in support of the sensory deprivation study, those who disobeyed by refusing to write the requested statement, and those who became whistleblowers by reporting the experimenter's questionable conduct to the research committee. And through the scores on the two personality inventories, the Dutch version of the 60-item uh, Hexco PIR, this measured the six major dimensions of personality and a nine-item decomposed games measure. This measured uh, social value orientation, SVO. 138 comparison students from the, the VU University were provided with a detailed description of the experimental setting. They were then asked, what would you do, and what would the average student at your university do? Sample. 149 undergraduate students, 96 women, 53 men, with a mean age of 20.8, took part in the research in exchange for either 7 euros or course credit. A total of 11 participants were removed from the initial sample of 160 because uh, of their suspiciousness about the nature of the study. Procedure. Eight pilot tests involving 92 undergraduates from the VU University in Amsterdam were conducted to ensure the procedure was credible and morally acceptable. These tests also served to standardise uh, uh, the experimenter authority behaviour throughout the experimental period. The comparison group was pr um, provided with a detailed description of the experimental setting and as I just went through, they were asked, what would you do and what would the average student at your university do? The participants were informed about what their task was, about the potential benefits slash risks of participation, and about their right to withdraw at any time with no penalty. They were also assured of the confidentiality of the information collected. Each participant was greeted in the lab by a male Dutch experimenter, who was formally dressed and had a stern demeanour. The experimenter proceeded with a seemingly unjustified request for each participant to provide a few names of fellow students and then presented the cover story. This is the gist of the cover story. The experimenter and an Italian colleague were investigating the effects of sensory deprivation on brain function, a recently conducted experiment on six participants in Rome who spent some time completely isolated, unable to see or hear anything, had disastrous effects. All panicked, their cognitive abilities were temporarily impaired, some experienced visual and auditory hallucinations. Two participants asked to stop because of their strong symptoms, but were not allowed to do so because then invalid data may have been collected. The majority said it had been a frightening experience. 
the experimenters wanted to replicate this study at the VU University in Amsterdam using a sample of college students, as there was currently no data on young people, but some scientists thought that their brains may be more sensitive to the negative effects of isolation. Although it is difficult to predict what would happen, the experimenter wanted to proceed with the experiment. A university research committee was evaluating whether to approve the study and were collecting feedback from students who knew details about the experiment. To help them make their decision, participants were told that the research committee forms were in the next room. So the participants were uh, asked to write a statement to convince the students they had previously indicated to participate in the experiment. Statements would be sent to the identified um, students by mail. The experimenter left the room for three minutes to allow participants to reflect on the action-based decisions they were about to make. Participants were then moved to a second room where there was a computer for them to use to write their statement, a mailbox and the research committee forms. The participants were told to be as enthusiastic as possible when writing their statements and had to use two adjectives among exciting, incredible, great and superb. The negative effects of sensory deprivation were not to be mentioned. The experimenter told the participants to begin and left the room for seven minutes. If a participant believed the proposed research on sensory deprivation violated ethical norms, he or she could challenge it by putting a form in the mailbox. After the seven minute interval, the experimenter returned and invited the participant to follow him back to the first room where he or she was administered two personality inventories, probed for suspicion, fully debriefed and asked to sign a second consent form, this time fully informed. The entire session lasted approximately 40 minutes. Key Findings Of all the respondents in the comparison group, only 3.6% indicated that, that they would obey the experimenter. Most believed that they would either be disobedient, 31.9%, or whistleblowers, 64.5%. When asked to predict the behaviour of other typical students at their university, only 18.8% for an average student at the VU University would obey, while they believe most other students would either disobey, 43.9%, or whistleblow, 37.3%. Of the 149 participants in the experimental situation, 76.5% obeyed the experimenter, this um, was 114 people, 14.1% disobeyed, 21 people, and 9.4% 14 people blew the whistle. Among whistleblowers, 6% had written a message, and 3.4% had refused to do so. No significant differences were found in any of the groups in relation to gender, religious affiliation, or religious involvement. However, a significant difference was observed with regard to faith, defined as a confident belief in a transcendent reality. Results for individual differences in personality among the three groups showed no statistically significant differences in any of the six personality factors measured by the Hexaco PIR. The results in terms of SVO showed that prosocial and individualistic participants were not unequally distributed among the, the three groups. Qualitative data from the study showed that those participants who obeyed did so because of external forces. Uh, quotes are that it was expected of me, that's why I continued. I cooperated because the experimenter asked me to. They had entered the agentic state and were not responsible for their behaviour. However, the opposite was true for disobedient participants, who felt responsible for, for their actions. For example, they said, I don't want to do unethical things, I would be very disappointed in myself, and I disobeyed because I felt responsible towards friends. If the exper experiment would r really hurt people, I wouldn't want to be responsible for that. Conclusions People tend to obey authority figures even if the authority is unjust. How people think slash what people uh, say they and others will do in a given situation often differs, differs from what actually happens. The internal cognitive processes of ordinary people wanted to appear good often differ from the outward persuasive power of situational forces that bind behaviour to a range of seemingly innox innoxious features in any given behavioural context. Individuals behave in completely different ways than expected when they find themselves in certain circumstances that are unfamiliar and somewhat extreme. Behavioural acts of both disobedience and whistleblowing are psychologically, socially and economically demanding for people, notably whistleblowers. Behaving in a moral manner is challenging for people, even when the reaction appears to observers as the simplest path to follow. With regard to faith, there appears to be a trend suggesting that whistleblowers have more faith than either obedient or disobedient individuals. 
thank you for watching this presentation. I hope you made some notes as I went along. And I'm sorry that there was a lot of content to note down, but thank you for watching and I'll be making some more videos, so make sure you check those out. Thank you.